Because I think the greatest fear that we face is ourselves. We all have dreams and it's very scary sometimes to accept, to say, okay, I want that. It's scary because you're afraid that if you put your heart and soul into it and you fail, then how are you going to feel about yourself, right? So being fearless means putting yourself out there and going for it. No matter what, go for it. Not for anybody else, but for yourself. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and others have greatness thrust upon them. With Kobe, it was all three. This year, I wanted to set the standard of hard work, and in doing so, I will be honoring Kobe Bryant's daily insane routine for the next 72 hours. So this is how it went. Nah. 3 a.m. is crazy. Principle number one, get ahead of the competition by getting a head start on the day. Kobe's mindset behind this routine was to get as much separation as he possibly can from his competitors and to work as hard as possible as you mentally and physically can. So the routine goes like this. You wake up at three, you train from four to six, rest. Then you go back at it again from nine to 11, rest. And then two to four, rest and then one more training session from seven to nine and then you get like maybe four to five hours of sleep if you're lucky the reason i'm doing this routine is to set the standard of hard work for the rest of the year because i have some pretty huge goals this year of hitting a hundred thousand subscribers by the end of the year and i'm currently only at 600 subscribers <laughs> so i have a very very long way to go and my second reason for doing this is to basically hit some PRs in the gym by the end of the year because I've been weightlifting for like 10 months now. There is one more bonus reason why I'm doing this. I want to reignite my passion for basketball because I used to love playing ball and watching the NBA, but I kind of stopped for the last year now. So I will be incorporating some basketball training sessions into this, which I'm super excited for. So let's get into it. Principle number two, hyper focus on something that you absolutely love. The reason this routine works so well for Kobe is because he had nothing else to focus on except for basketball, which he absolutely loved. These training sessions have definitely reignited my passion for ball because there's no other feeling like being in the flow state for ball training shot after shot on your opponent, especially my little brother who's been talking a lot of shit lately. Crazy. I feel like this day is never ending. Like I'm looking at my schedule. I still have like one, two, three, four, five, five to six things left on the calendar. But we'll see how uh, this routine plays out. Day two of the Kobe Bryant daily routine challenge. And I am utterly exhausted. I am so tired. I don't even know how to explain it to you guys. I woke up at 3.30 but my body was so sore, I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't physically get up until like 4.30. For an hour, I was just lying down, trying to like bring every muscle fiber in my body to get myself up. Principle number three, the Mamba mentality. This applies to anyone who is striving to achieve greatness in their field. There is no single definition, but over time, it came to represent a mindset that encompasses hard work, obsessive preparedness, and persistence on the journey to achieving a goal. I just finished my break. It went by really quick, unfortunately. I have another two hour working session, the second one for the day. I'm just going to be video editing all day, really, during these work sessions. So I'll see you tomorrow. It's days like this where you have to remind yourself, why are you doing this shit? It's tough, man. So day three was just spent at the gym, video editing, and then I finished off with a soccer game at night. But little did you guys know, I have something to share with all of you that I've been keeping a secret up until now, learning from failure. I officially finished the challenge, but there's something we need to talk about. In the video, it said 72 hours, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I was supposed to do this for seven days, so a whole week but I actually failed miserably. And I wanted to talk to you about the challenge and what it taught me about myself. And I hope this can bring a lot of value into your lives. Basically, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, this was the worst challenge I've ever done. You know, we see a lot of routines and we think like we're supposed to improve our productivity and be great and do all these amazing things. But honestly, in reality, this routine only works if you only have one thing to focus on and nothing else. And for Kobe, it happened to be basketball. 
Now, this is not to critique Kobe or anything. You know, it worked for him and his lifestyle. And, you know, he was willing to make all of these sacrifices in order to be truly great at his sport. I realized something about myself on day four and five. I wasn't willing to make those sacrifices because I have so many other things on my plate, like my girlfriend, my friends, my brother, my cousins. And, you know, when my family comes over, I do tend to prioritize their time because they mean a lot to me. Now, does it mean you have to sacrifice a lot to truly be a master or something? Yeah, it does take a lot of sacrifice. I don't think I was willing to make that sacrifice. So it taught me a lot about myself and what motivates me and how to stay consistent over a long period of time. Another valuable lesson that I want all of you to take is when you work hard towards something and you expect a result out of it and you don't get that result, what tends to happen is two things. One, you get disappointment. And two, when you do it over a certain amount of time, you get burnt out. For me personally, if I want to do something now, I'm not going to expect anything anymore. I don't want to just do it because, oh, I want to expect this body or expect this result or this number. It's such an egotistical way of looking about life to doing something just to get a result out of it because you'll never truly be fulfilled if you just chase goals because it's just, just going to be the next goal. Once you get to this number, it'll be the next number. So for me, whenever I make a decision or an action, I want it to consciously come from my own self and I don't want to absolutely destroy myself just to get a result because I'll never be fulfilled and they say something about high achievers how they'll never be happy because they're always chasing the next thing I don't want to be that guy anymore so it's really changed my life in terms of like changing my perspective and mindset about life I really lifted so much pressure and weight off of my shoulders because I used to always walk around with so much pressure but you know what we have time all we can do is really just do our very best and I hope that will help someone watching on the other side of the screen because it's not always about productivity and being better by 3000 percent after doing this certain thing it's not like that life doesn't work like that there's a lot of ups and downs you're gonna go for you're never gonna reach the state of nirvana where you're just like happy all the time or you don't feel that like you know emptiness you're always gonna feel like that so balancing in your own conscious decisions over a long period of time what you do without expecting anything kind of approaching life with like you don't give an f mentality will really help you and it takes a long time to develop that and that's what i'm going to be doing for my next mission anyways i hope you enjoyed the routine until next time guys